Valentine's Day is almost upon us. So if you want to be riding high like a Chinese spy balloon over the U.S., but you don't want to get shot down, then you and your significant other need to go to www.nttfgpod.com and subscribe. I'm Rock. And I'm Archie. Well, our opinions, eh, they might not matter to some, but... It's a podcast. Immature, crass, trashy. And those are their good qualities. These poor schmucks are a couple of IQ points away from eating paste. But when it comes to music, sports, and comedy, well, that's all they know. You're listening to Not These Two Fucking Guys. Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. Oh, Rocky. Yo, my friend. Woman, let me be your woman. Woman, woman, woman. I like you. I do. I like you. I do. I get it. I play it. I get it. What am I doing? I, I don't know, having a fucking seizure? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have no fucking idea what that is. Do you know who Doja Cat is? Yeah. Yo. So, uh, throughout the morning, getting ready, we play Z100, and those three songs... That fucking I- Z Morning Zoo! <laughs> I fucking hate Z100. I've... I, I, I there's sometimes I like it, but you want to know when I do like Z100? Yo, what's the fucking you? phrase that pays? <laughs> do you want to <laughs> know when I do like Z100? Seriously, we have to keep it PG, bro. We got to keep it PG for when the girls. got the girlies in the car. I get it. Um, the kitties. Uh, do you want to know when I like it? When Danielle Monero does the news, because then I'm like, oh, I get like some pop culture news, and then I can kind of like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Like that's kind of cool. Is she Other the one that I- talks like a real? Italian New Yorker? Yeah, she's the fucking cackle. Really cack it on. Um so uh those songs, amongst others. All right. Doja Cat. She's fucking, you know, she's pop artist, pretty dope. I I I like those songs. I liked everyone. All right. There's an article that I read the other day. We're going to quote NME.com. Doja Cat says, wants to make a hardcore punk record. Yo. Come on. Dude. What she I, know about that? What she know about that, son? So I I saw this video the other day. Um, I'll, I think I'll post a link on uh, on our site. Yo. She's good. I'm not playing around. All right. Like she has a, a punk song? She's got a punk song. I don't know if it's a remake off of, off of one of her other songs, though. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not that in, involved yet. But what I did see, being wa- watching rock and metal for fucking 40 years, I can see that she has it in her. Do you know when you, know when you can see somebody like fucking... Like who's a pop artist or a rap artist, and they're trying to yeah. get punk, or and and they're going, they're going through the motions, or they're 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 acting. Sure, I, I act. I actually saw it, and I was like, oh, oh shit. And then I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta dive into this because I gotta see if like who the band is, because the because it, it wasn't just straight up like, how do I explain this? It, it it wasn't just straight up like, oh, pop punk formula. Here you go. Here's the first. Here's the because I'm listening to the guitars and I'm listening. And I'm like, oh, like there's metal in here. Like it's metal. I hear metal influencing influences right. within the song. Dude, it was fucking really good. Like really good. Um, Where is the song? I'll get it. I'm going to post it. But she wants to do a pop punk record. And she wrote, she read, in, uh, she, uh, excuse me. She said in this article that she wasn't just going to be like all the other pop punk artists that are going to come out just because. And this is something about it. This is something that she, you could tell that she wants to do for fun. Like, yo, I made my fucking music. I made millions. This, like, I love, I love me some pop punk music. And I'm going to make a record. 
and I fucking hope she does. I really do. Because I, I you said hardcore punk before. All right, whatever. Pop punk, hardcore punk. That's what I said. Hardcore. Hardcore punk. Okay, so what is it? You, you're confusing the fuck out of me. All right, because I'm th- you know I'm thinking of MGK right now, and that's why it's pop punk is in my head. All right, so it's hardcore punk. Hardcore punk. So what, what would you what would you define as hardcore punk? Hardcore punk, like Poison Ivy, or fucking, uh, um, like Sex Pistols. No. Or, like. Destination unknown. No, that's not hardcore. Rancid. Punk. That's yeah, not hardcore no. punk. No. What's well, then? What's hardcore punk to you? Hardcore punk is probably more like fucking like agnostic front, like something like that. Okay. All right. To me. To you. <laughs> okay. So what does she sound like? Doja Cat rocking out. <laughs> It sounded like a Nasa front. It didn't sound like that type of music. It sound, but it sounded, it sounded like, like. But I heard like more metal influence in there, so more than like punk. I'm was gonna, it? You don't, I'm you don't know. It. All right, all right, cool. <laughs> because I can't play it, then we'll get we'll get taken down. That's yeah, what, that's what all the famous fucking podcasts say. <laughs> can't play that. Can't play it. We'll get taken down. Well, we didn't clear publishing on that one, so yeah, we're gonna have yeah. to. Uh... No, but be on the lookout for Doja Cat because we will Hold be. Up. And uh, you know, I think it's gonna sound dope, bro. All right, hardcore punk, pop punk. We don't know, <laughs> but but it's gonna be punk. There you go. All right, I admit it. I'm raising my hand. I'm gonna eat my shoe. I admit it. <laughs> <laughs> now i'm not going to take back a hundred percent of this statement because what i said i meant you know it, it might sound mean i get it i'm not trying to be a bully but a couple of podcasts ago i said i don't i don't like jonah hill's face <laughs> yeah, you really went in on Jonah Hill, like whatever, like, bro. That's my opinion. What did he do to you? I know. Well, he didn't do anything to me. It's just, I, I just, he looks like a, like a fucking, like a 1981 porn director. You sound um, like a bully. I, I do sound like a bully, and I apologize. But hold on, this comes with a but. Over the weekend, we saw a movie, you people. Do you know of this movie? I heard of it. Yes. It's on Netflix. It was fucking funny. Really? Fucking funny. Because I heard it was I, I heard it was a fucking turd. No. No way. No, no way. people were saying that. Yeah. That was Seriously? like uh, yeah. It, in fact, in fact, I haven't laughed out loud in a while. Because I woke up my wife like six times. How many gummies? How many gummies? Uh... I was on one gummy. Okay. All right. So then then it wasn't as funny as you thought it was. Go ahead. No, it was funny. It was very funny. All right. What's it about? You people follows a new couple and their families who find themselves examining modern love and family dynamics amidst clashing cultures, societal expectations, and generational differences. Now Eddie Murphy plays a fucking he's like a um uh what the fuck why, why is it escaping me? Um because you have limited Muslim, brain capacity. Muslim. <laughs> I couldn't think of it. He plays like a hardcore Muslim. Like like he's like uh uh like like you know all right. What uh, the, the the daughter's like like, oh, you know, I I met someone. Is he Muslim? <laughs> and it's fucking Jonah Hill. <laughs> But like, so Jonah Hill in the movie is a is an aspiring podcaster. Ugh. But but Ugh. yeah, his. Ah, uh, that's why you like him. Look at you. Ah. No. Jonah. Oh my God! A guy who goes up and down in weight wants to be a podcaster. <laughs> You're like, this is close to fucking home. <laughs> no, he's a podcaster who hates his job, hates his day job. <laughs> And plays he, guitar. He plays guitar. No, he um, 
he his podcast is about the culture the culture okay yeah and his 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 uh co-host is a um an african-american bald head woman and they go back and forth about fucking society and rap and talk they, they talk about white and black culture and how it could uh you know like how you could never succeed. You could never be lovers and this and that. And when he meets Eddie Murphy, fucking hysterical. He and because Eddie Murphy's not fucking like uh because when I think of Eddie Murphy uh, nowadays, like I think you know, fucking, no, no, I think of uh, Shrek, his animated movie, the fucking. The, the family, the fucking whatever the you know the the what is it the mum um you just let me suffer <laughs> what, yeah what's, what's what's the name of the, I'm not throwing you a fucking lifeline what, what's the name of I don't know okay, you I, got I don't I've never even watched those movies I I think they're not funny but like him in this in this movie he was like like fuck this motherfucker <laughs> like like shit like that like fuck this motherfucker fuck it yo man. first off also like, too, I, I I saw a clip of it. Eddie Murphy looks fucking good, bro. Eddie Murphy looks great. He's not aging. No. I no, bless no. him. No, he took some pill. He's not aging. No. He sold his soul. Um, David Duchovny is Joan Hill's uh father. Uh Julie Julie, Julie Dreyfus is <laughs> Julie 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 Julie. Ju- no Ju- fucking Ju- way. Julie 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 Julia Julie Dreyfus is the mother. <laughs> Elaine. <laughs> Elaine. Elaine's the mother. And she played a fucking great part. Great part. I can't, like, I'll be honest with you. I was actually talking to my wife the next day. Like, I wish you stayed up. It was fucking hysterical. It was hysterical. I thought it was hysterical. Um, uh-huh. And I'm surprised that people were bashing this that you're saying. Because I actually thought it was very funny. And I take back a little bit what I said. I still don't like his face, but he made a great movie. Oh, All you right, know who, so- yo, you know who, you know who the you know who Eddie Murphy's wife was. Um, Ice Cube's girlfriend on Friday, I think it was, if you remember. Nia Long. Nia Long is that her name? That might be her name. I'll I'll, I'll tell you in a second. Listen, they should call you fucking details. <laughs> <laughs> Nia Long. You had that at the back burner for some reason, you weird fuck. No, I Nia fucking Long, I don't know why. I you fucking know love is. I love Friday. I love Saturday. Nia she was Nia Will Long. Smith's girlfriend in Fresh Prince. Come on. She, she was Will Smith's girlfriend? Come on. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Details. Deets. I'm gonna call you Deets from now on. All right, whatever, bro. You know what? I'm not great. But I'm good. Um, mm-hmm. yes, Nia Long, it was the mother. Um Anybody out there, you're going to watch this. You people on Netflix, I don't give a fuck what Rocky and his fucking horse. Give him a spoiler. At the end, it was all a dream. (laughs) He used to read Word Up magazine. Oh, you're a hack. (laughs) Fucking hack. Salt and pepper and heavy D. Oh, my God. So, Jason. Yes. Who? My friend, this Sunday is going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, who's going to win the Super Bowl? All right, listen. Or hold on, say it the right way. The big game, because we don't want to be sued. We don't want to get this taken down. Who's going to win the big game? Super Bowl. All right. Um, I'm- we have the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. Versus. The Philadelphia Eagles. Okay. Who, who we, takes it? Who do we got? Um. Anybody, I think a lot of people are going to go with the Eagles, but I think everyone seems to be going with the Eagles. Yeah. But I, I, I you know, what I think, I think Mahomey is going to fucking is going to give them a little bit of an issue. Now they both have good defenses. The uh, the over is fifty one. Would you take the over? Eagles are getting one and a half. I think it's gonna be a high scoring game. Yes, you, you, you would take the over. Yeah, Eagles are giving one and a half, aren't they? 
They're giving one and a half. Yes, yes, yes. They're giving one and a half. So everyone, I, I the Chiefs. Everyone's sleeping on the Chiefs' defense. I think it's underrated. The Chiefs' defense. Um, but I will say, <clears throat> everyone's picking the Eagles now. The Eagles, unfortunately, beat our New York Giants. Mm-hmm. They beat uh, your, who else? They beat Dallas Cowboys. So the Eagles have not been tested so far in the playoffs. And I feel like in a weird way, it's going to come back to haunt them because this year they're not used to playing from behind and having to come back. Mm-hmm. They really weren't in a lot of close, close games. So I don't know, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go against the majority and pick Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas city chiefs. For once, I think we agree. We agree. I think think fucked up. Yeah, man. I think Mahomes is going to win. Mahomey. I call him Mahomey. And uh, I like it. I don't know. Yeah, what a career, huh? How many years in the NFL? How many Super Bowls did he go to? What is this? This will be his his third one. His third one, right? I'm going to say. How many years is he in the NFL? uh, Two. No. I want to say this fifth or sixth year. Jeez. I'm going to say 33 to 31 Kansas City Chiefs. Thir- All right, you heard it here, folks. 33 31 Kansas City Chiefs. All right, I'm going Kansas City 27, Eagles 23. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. But yet, the over looks delicious. I understand how you're saying. I don't know. Maybe. You know. I think the game's uh, going over. Yeah. All right, man. This is good shit. Everybody, I'm, uh, I'll let you know next, uh, podcast. I'm going to be smoking my first blunt. No. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be smoking my first brisket. Ooh. Yeah, I've never smoked a brisket before. That's like 10 hours, bro. Like, Dude, it may be every bit of 12 hours. Oh, God. Can I give you some pro tips? I got to get up at like fucking 6 in the morning to fucking do this thing. Let me give you some pro tips. What? You never smoked a brisket? Never smoked a brisket. Okay. It's about a 10-pound brisket, I think. That's pretty big. Yeah. 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 Okay, so... You need to trim it. Mm-hmm. The fat cap side goes up mm-hmm. on the top. You've smoked the brisket? Yeah. I've perfected smoking briskets. Oh, ho, ho. We might need it, to have a and, and briskets can be hum your first time can, can humble you. Just I'm just telling you. So I'm, I'm gonna give you little pointers of how not to fuck it up. My boss gave me a brisket for my birthday. And he said, Don't fuck it up. <laughs> It really up, limp brisket. <laughs> he threw it down on my desk. He was like, "Happy birthday!" It reminded me in Scrooge when the when the father came home and was like, "Hi, Merry Christmas!" <laughs> I gave him five pounds of veal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Only you would get brisket for your birthday, anyway. Go ahead. Fat side up. Trim the other side. You gotta trim the the fat on the other side. Okay. Whatever spice makes sure you like. Mm-hmm. Some people coat it in mustard to make it. You That's know, a it binder. That's a binder. That's okay. a binder. Doesn't doesn't taste it. Doesn't taste different. But um, first, I would say the first half, the first. Actually, I'm sorry. The last four, two to four hours, I put tin foil on it, right? But butcher paper. Whatever, whatever, whatever your your, your pleasure is. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen is, especially with a brisket that size, it's going to stall, right? What do you mean stall? You're going to have, you're going to, yes. You're going to, you're going to, what, put it at uh, 120, what what temperature are you cooking that? I hope it's like two something. I have that Weber bullet smoker and it's like, it's hard, it's hard. It's never like accurate. The thermometer is never accurate. All right. So you're going to figure 205, 220 around there. Yeah. When it hits the stall and you keep sticking it with the thermometer, 
or if you have a probe and it's not moving, Mm -hmm. you're going to be very, 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 very tempted to turn the fucking heat up. (laughs) Fucking do not. Do not turn that temperature up. You wait it out. It may be 12 hours. It may be, I don't want to scare you, that size, depending on your smoker and how it regulates, could be 12 to 14 hours. I don't have don't time. fucking touch it. Do not touch the 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 heat. I'm gonna put it on at eight in the morning. It's gonna get done in like half no, time. You gotta do it earlier. What time? What six in the morning? Yeah, five six. Do you have a meat probe? Five. <laughs> Who the fuck is getting up at five in the morning on Sunday? You're, you're throwing it in there. That's all. And you got to spray it with with either apple cider vinegar or apple juice. You gotta keep it juicy. Yeah. Don't so my my one tip for you. Do not turn the fucking temperature up. That's your one tip. Wait out wait out the stall period. If there if there's one tip you can give me. That's it. One tip. That's it. Just a tip. Just the tip. Wait out the stall period. Turning it up has has been the the, the ruination of many a men. Man. Men. Arch. Yo. I am super excited. Our guest oh. tonight. I've been following her career for a long time. I uh, she is a she's a veteran of Bellator UFC. She was a World Series of Fighting Women's Strawweight Champion uh, and currently competes in Ryzen. Please welcome to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast, Ms. Jessica Aguilar. Hey guys, hey, hey. Thank having me. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you guys? Good, Very good. good. Doing well. Thank you for your time. Um, we we appreciate it. We've been talking back and forth for a while. I'm glad we got to finally connect uh, and have you on. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great, great. Just you know, enjoy life, man. So you're back in Mexico now, huh? I am. I currently live in Mexico. I'm actually in Texas right now. Okay. I came to visit my mom for her birthday. So well, I'm here for a couple of days. Uh, but yes, I I reside. I, I live in Mexico in Puebla. Um, about an hour and a half south of Mexico City. So yeah, enjoying the weather up there, the altitude. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you went there, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, you went there to train at altitude, is that right? Um, well, that was one of the reasons. Not, I, that wasn't mainly the, the move, you know, that we, uh, um, my, my girlfriend and I decided to um, just go live in Mexico and find, find a place where, where we liked and we found Puebla um, and it had just happened to have, you know, California weather and the high altitude. And then I found a good gym out there. So there's a good uh, there's a couple of good gyms out there that, that I've been training at. So, um, you know, I'm just enjoying it up there. Very good. That's awesome. very good. Yeah, because it's uh, it's currently 19 degrees in New Jersey right now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I just I just walked outside. I got like a little you think this is gray hair? It's <laughs> it's ice. <laughs> well, at least good. Yeah, I actually love the cold weather. I've, you know, I've I I love it. I was in South, you know, I was raised in Houston in Texas, and then uh I was in South Florida for about 15 years. And so the heat, the humidity, it was like, no. And now it's like I love the cold. I get in ice cold baths every day. Except for that, travel. <laughs> now, obviously, you train inside, but like, does it does weather does it affect you at all? No, it doesn't. No, no, mm-hmm. no. the weather doesn't affect me right now. Uh, Puebla, it's probably in the fifties. Actually, it's like no, California. Well, that- yeah, it's really really nice. Um, but the the altitude is is high. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's higher than Mexico city. It's about 1500 feet wow. higher than Mexico city. So, um, it's really good for me. So talk about that. You obviously you feel a difference. What is the difference you feel when you're training at such a high altitude? I mean, you know, before I moved to Mexico, uh, we were in Colorado. Um, so I was, you know, I, I started, I'm like, you know, now that I'm, you know, a little younger at age, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I I was like, you know, let me find the altitude because conditioning for me since since I started my career has been one of like the most important things um, is has having great conditioning. And um, now because of, you know, because I'm younger. Um, I, I, there's some things that change. Obviously you guys know, you know, you can't, you can't run as much there's, you know, due to injury and surgeries, there's, there's different things that you have to kind of adjust. And so, um, I was like, okay, well, because I can't, you know, run as much as I want to anymore, let me train at high altitude and, and, you know, um, Mm. exercise a, a different organ in my body. Um, and so I, we went out to Colorado I loved it out there was working with uh, Raquel and Tisha out there and, and, um, pound for pound. And there's just a lot of, a lot of talent out there worked with, uh, with Rose as well. So it was really, it was a good time. And then I decided, I'm like, if we're going to go to Mexico, let's find a, you know, the high altitude. I thought it was going to be Mexico city, but then we found Puebla and I loved it. And it was just about an hour and a half. So, um, and, and just to answer your question, I think that the difference that I feel, it's just the, the lung capacity. Like you just, yeah. when I train somewhere else where we're sea, sea level, it's like, I, I, I can go for, I can go for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, so I had that adjustment. I, I hardly didn't feel that move because I was in high altitude in Colorado. And then when I went to Puebla, it was not that much difference. So, you know, I kind of just... I, I kind of just uh, kept going. Mm. At the same pace. Are there things you look back at now, uh, this stage of your career, as far as like you're saying training goes, that things you did when you first started out that you're like, holy shit, why did I even train that way? You know, I could have been smarter about it or. or the yeah, crazy. Now. I, we wouldn't wear any like headgear back in the, <laughs> days, in the old days. You know, I saw you guys were talking to my old uh, homie and, and coach. He was a teammate and coach, Dean Thomas. Yeah, back he's great. Days, mm-hmm. yeah, back in the old days when we started ATT, headgear. I mean, you know, I was the only girl out there. They were kicking my ass. And I mean, yeah, we were. Now it's it's different. <laughs> now I'm like bubble wrap, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think that when I was when I was younger, it, it was also like, you know, sleep. You know, not a, not a lot of sleep. You know, we were because I was working also when I started full time, and then um, I would train full time. So would wake up at five in the morning to go running, and then again at night to go running. It was just crazy. Like I would get four or five hours, and that was plenty. And I was training hard too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of things that that changed, but I guess for the better, you know, like I think that now that I'm older now, um, I know more and I, you know, I have all that experience to to help me. You, start, you, you, you work smarter, I'm sure, and pick up tips over over the years that make things a bit easier. Yeah, yeah it makes it it makes life a lot, bit, a lot easier, actually. A lot How- better. I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, and that's what I'm always fascinated with, with, with combat athletes, you know, how your body physically feels to you from when you first started out till now in your journey. Like I, I can speak, obviously not a mixed martial artist, but recovery time in anything, whether it's doing an activity, drinking, anything, the recovery time is just not what it was when you were in your twenties. It's just right. not. <laughs> right. It's the same too. Yeah, exactly. Like I was telling you, I would be like on four or five hours of sleep and, you know, I would still like be like, yeah, I could jump off a roof. Yeah, let's do it. Like now it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. I can't go snowboarding anymore. Let's go skiing, you know, like, yeah. Yeah, I, I turned down like uh, things that I wouldn't have turned down earlier in my career in my twenties. Now, ob- obviously, a veteran to the sport. Besides, you knowing your body, what have you seen? The sport in in the sport has changed. Oh my gosh, I've seen it transform. You know, I was in the yep. day where like handfuls. We were about man, not a lot of girls, not a lot mm. of people in the sport. You know, I I had to fight in three three different weight classes you know i was in the you, and i'm not sure if you guys remember but the bulldog days bulldog yeah. oh yeah 
So yeah, I started there and, you know, I've just seen the sport grow so much for females. Like now, you know, we're headlining shows. Yeah. And, oh yeah. You know, there's, there's more, obviously more opportunities in all around the world for, for females at all weight classes. Um, so I've seen that evolution, which is really cool. Um, and you know, that was back in the days when the UFC with Dana was like, girls aren't going to be in the UFC. I will never have girls in the UFC, you know? Yeah. 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 Look at, look at, look at now we're headlining shows in the UFC. So it's really, really cool. Um, that's one of the things that, 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 you know, I've been honored to see grow as, as, as an MMA fighter. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, obviously, like I said, I've, I've been a big fan watching you since the beginning, and I'm just going through and looking at your fights, and I'm like, holy shit, like you really fought everybody, and and none of these easy fights, you know, especially especially when we went in the UFC, they really threw the gauntlet down to you, huh? They they, they yeah. every every single person you fought is, is tough, you know. Uh, obviously, for, uh, current champion, uh, Wheelie Zhang or Zhang Wheelie, however however she says it, um, but um. Yeah, talk about your time in the UFC. Like, what did you, you came? You came from World Series of Fighting. You were a champion there. Talk about your your time in the UFC. Well, you know, I, you know, a lot of people they, you don't hear it talked about. I don't know why, but I'll talk about it. And uh, there, it's it, they're they're facts. So I'm just talking. You know, I'm speaking on on facts. Good. I'm Love it. Preach. Um, I came into the UFC when I was with the World Series of Fighting. Um, I was the number one seed. I was the number one straw weight in the world. So um, I actually turned down the house to be in the house because I was already signed with the WSOF. And, you know, I was taking care of my family. So, like, you know, being in the house wasn't going to help me take care of my family. So I made the decision to stay with uh, WSOF. And I became... Uh, the number one straw weight in the world in Bellator when I beat Megumi Fuji. Yep. Was I think in 2011, 11 or 12, something like that. And uh, then one, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have the date in front of me. I thought I had it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was in Bellator. And so I became the number one straw weight. And at that time, it was you beat you, the rankings, right? You go from rank, you beat the best and you become the best. Yeah. Um, it wasn't like no popularity thing that they skip you and, you know, like you have all these followings and things like that. And so um, when I turned down the UFC, well, the house, um, I was still fighting for w- WSOF and they couldn't find a fight for me because Invicta had all the all the straw weights. They had, you know, mostly all the straw weights signed. So um, UFC came back around, offered me a, a deal. And we came to an agreement and I, I, you know, I asked WSOF to give me the release and that's how it happened. And so I went in as the number one seed. So at that time, Claudia Gadelia was, I think the number one, she was, she was a number one in the UFC or like, I mean, whoever won that fight would go fight. I think it was Carla for the belt. Yeah. yeah. I think Carla won the whole house. Right. So Claudia with the Gadella was the number one. So the champion was Carla and then it was Claudia Gadella. And the fight that they gave me to start, you know, for my first fight was Claudia Gadella. And I, you know, at that time I was young too. I was younger and, you know, I was coming off of a certain, it's not an excuse, but it's just the truth. I was coming off of a, a, a labrum, a shoulder surgery. And I had my surgery in January and I fought Claudia in August. So Again, you think you're it's everything's easy. I'm going to be the same. And mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't work the same, but it was a great experience. I went to Rio and we, we showed it off and and uh, that was my first fight there. Um, and then after that, you know, injuries started happening more for me. You know, I started getting I had a, I was training for I, I don't know. I forget. I forget who I was. Tra- Juliana. I, Juliana something. Uh, who was I training for the second fight? And I tore my ACL and oh, oh. yeah. So then I had the ACL then I had the, you know, wrist surgery. So it was thing, you know, uh, surgery after surgery and it, the business, it, it doesn't, it's a business. They don't care. Yeah. yeah. It is right. You like you, you take the fight or you're going to be, we're going to sit you out for, for, for the time. They're not, they're not protecting, you know, I mean, unless, mm-hmm. 
you have so many followers and you, you know, you, whatever. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But um, so I, I mean, I had fun, you know, I, I was, I, I had a good time and, and uh, my second fight, who did I fight my second fight at the UFC? Was it? Uh, your second fight was Courtney Casey. That was after the ACL. Yeah. So then after Claudia Gadella, I sat out for like two years. So almost two and a half years. Um, and then it was, it was Courtney Casey. Yep. And, um, that was back. Yeah. That was in, in Texas. And then I fought, uh, Wheelie. Mm -hmm. That's no excuses. I mean, that's, you know, that, uh, I had great camp. That was the only, that was the, actually, uh, the only besides the first one, Claudia Gadelia, but I came back too early during surgery. So what I would tell the fighters is just heal up. And then come back when you're a hundred percent or close oh. to a hundred percent per person. Yeah. Um, because it's not worth it. Right. It's not, it's not worth it. Just say no. And that's it. Yeah. Um, and so wheelie Zhang, I had another full camp, N you know, no injuries. It was great. Dean and I went to, to China. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, we had a different game plan because when I went to fight wheelie, I usually, you know, kind of fill out the first round and then get busier as the rounds go, you know, continue. And for this one, the game plan was like, just go in fast. Like, sure. let's go in and, you know, like, I want you to like straight up, like bell rings action. Like, I don't yeah. want you to fill her out. I don't want, you know, you know, to do anything. I just want you to fight. That's what I did. And it was, <laughs> got taken down. She has incredible technique. There's no mm -hmm. space on the ground and just, it's, you know, arm barred arm barred for simple mistake no you know my feet weren't alive um so yeah that's that was that and then um uh, my last fight was marina rodriguez eight day notice so basically ufc called and they say hey you you want to take this last minute fight i think claudia or uh claudia it's that carla sparza got injured or something i think she was gonna fight her and they called and they said, well, we're like, well, what if we don't want to take it? Cause it's eight days notice. This was, I, it, she was number three, you know, she was up close to. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. so um, they were like, well, you, you're kind of, you kind of have to take it. If not, you, you don't, I don't know when you're going to fight. You could, it could be six months. It could be a year. It could be two years. And as a fighter like that, I've been inconsistent. So, you, you know, I had a business too. So like, I'm like, I want to fight. I need to fight. Like I need to eat, you know? Yeah, and of course. So, of course. Um, I took the fight and it was, a, I was a war that was in Philly. Yeah. And, uh, it was, you know, I know it. A lot of people know it. It was a fight of night, dude. Like we went at it. Like no I, doubt. It, was, it was like back and forth and like, it was crazy. And it, they just, they, they, you know, they didn't give us the bonus. So um, that was how I went out. That was how I went out. But that's my style. You know, every time I, I don't, I, I don't turn down fights. I don't turn down fights. I'm down, you know, I, I want to fight the best. Um, obviously, I've fought the best in the world because sure. I worked hard to get to be in that space. You know, like I told in another interview, it's like, they were like, so how did you feel fighting these girls? And I was like, well, what do you mean? How did I feel? Like I earned it. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like I worked hard for that. <laughs> like I worked hard to, to be in that spot. They just didn't give it to me. It wasn't just like, Hey, yeah. let's just bring just Gagler to fight the best in the world. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I know that that hard work, the, my hard work has paid off and, you know, like, in anything, if you want to do something and you want to do it right, you got to put in the work. And so, you know, I, I, I did it and, and I can, I am proud to say that I made my, my dream come true, which when I started the sport was become the best in the world. And I can say that, Hey, I was the best in the world at one point. So, you know, not a lot of people can say that. And, and that's a, I think that, um, yeah, that's something to be proud of. So. Absolutely. I think I think what gets lost on maybe the common fan is how there's a finite period of when a fighter is at their absolute peak, right? And they're in their they're they're uh basically in their prime and and 
it could be from and you've seen it from fighters from fight to fight fight to the next fight you're like holy shit that's how how quickly it, it can go away so for you to have the longevity that you do i think really just says something about um who you are it it, it contradicts your fighting style because because you fight anybody at any time and you know you're not you don't fight safe <laughs> so the the longevity I, th- this is definitely well, an anomaly but it's <laughs> my nice my you know side <laughs> um, but I yeah don't you, don't, that, you don't see that too often you don't see that too often with, with somebody who has longevity that you do that and, and fight the way you do what do you you attribute it to hard work i guess hard work mexican yes you know, exactly. like, it's like you know you fight forward you just keep coming we don't i don't stop um yeah it's just that i think that's that's what it is i mean it's i'm not going to stop till the bell rings like that's that's what i signed up for that's my job right so yeah, yep. you go in there you go in there to fight you, you it's just you got to fight so that's what i that's what i go in there to do so that's your awesome. last your last fight was in Ryzen. Now right. I, I've heard in interviews you say nothing but great things about this company. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about it. I mean, it's like Pride and WWE, dude. Like yeah, that's, that's <laughs> how you described it. I'm like, yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like Pride meets WWE. It's so cool. They respect you no matter you know how old you are. Um, and so I love Japan. I've been going to Japan for for a while now. Um, and I just love their culture, you know, super cool. The, 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 uh, the fans are super respectful. Sure. It's like a golf, like a golf tournament. Yeah. Like, you're quiet. And then like a submission technique or something, or, you know, some kind of transition and they're like, wow. And then it's like, so it, it's really cool. That's it's, interesting. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. They, um, you know, I remember from back from e- e- even like the days in pride, uh, you're right. The fa- it, it's it, it, it's almost like it's like an eerie quiet when they're watching the fight because it's so like focused and so it's like and and to, to a regular person watching for the first time like oh wait are they not enjoying it no they're they're enjoying it very much <laughs> so right. much so that they're a hundred percent concentrated on it where I feel like the fans in the U S a, a lot different <laughs> exactly and another thing is that you can like it's a show before the fight yes. You know, we can be who we want to be, wear what we want to wear, come out with, you know, with what we want to come out with. And we put on a show for for the fans and then we go in there and fight. So That's like, awesome. and, hey, so it's really cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So I'm, I'm happy to be uh, with the organization at this point in my career um, because and, and like the talent in the in the Adam White division there is stacked. You know, they got like some real talent and these girls too, they go out to fight like they're Asian. They, you know, they're like samurais, you know, they go out there and it's, it's just ingrained in their culture too. Right. So um, I really enjoy, I really enjoy fighting. Awesome. So talk about um, Adam weight. Does that, what's the limit on that? Like 105, 106, like that's the. Yeah. 105. I, 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 yeah. For, for rising, it's, it's 105. I fought this, this one, my last fight, I fought at 108. Um, but yeah, it's 105. I think for one, it's a little different. The rules are a little different, Mm -hmm. like the way they kind of weigh you or the week of the fight, you have to be at 105 or like the closest to 105. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm, I was one of the like smallest straw weights too. So, you know, I would, I would, always have to my cuts were like three pounds or five pounds you know to to make that's not bad yeah not but I was fighting bigger girls so yeah you know, fighting you know like i started the female team at att like i was the first girl there i was the first female there and and you know as we started growing as a team started growing for the females like you know when joanna showed up she was 145 pounds wow oh, jesus she was 148 pounds fighting at 115. Oh. Like, so, you know, and I was walking around at one 126 fighting mm-hmm. at 115. You know, Courtney Casey, she's huge. Like these girls are, you know, Claudia Gadelia, like she cut, they, they cut a lot, you know? So yeah. I was, I was one of the, the small straw weights in the division. 
Um, so it's it's nice to to fight. And now in this time, at this point in my career, it's, it's nice to to be able to fight kind of so, in the same place. I would assume uh, after World Series of Fighting, when you went to the UFC, if UFC had Adam Waite for females, I'm sure that is that what you would have gravitated towards naturally? For sure. Yeah. Because, you know, at the time when I started my career, there was not, there wasn't a lot of Adam. There was, it was just, <laughs> you know, 118. I fought 118. I fought 125. I fought 115. I mean, I had to fight in different, different weight classes, even, even though, I mean, I was close to it or I wasn't, I had to gain some weight for 125, which wow. kind of made everything different, you know, like heavier and, um, but yeah, if, if the, if the, if I had the atom weight division, the atom weight division was, was around when I started. Yeah. I think that would have been my division. Yeah. Like you said, how, how you, most of the girls that you fought were bigger because you're, you fall, I guess, right in between of, of, you know, having to, you know, make that weight. But these girls, like you said, cut a tremendous amount of weight, which I, I, I guess the school of thought is people think that, you know, you cut the most weight, fight at your lowest weight. But I, I know some fighters that that would disagree and think that you're if you're too depleted and, and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. And, and all, that all goes back also to how you dehydrated yourself and how you rehydrate, you know, how you recovered from that. So some people we've seen that it's you know, it's been bad for, you know, they they you've had a bad weight cut and they haven't, you know, recovered the same. And then it affects them fight day. Um, others you've seen, like they do a great cut and a great recovery and there's much stronger for me. Um, I think that I felt it more in the UFC because I, I, you know, I don't know, my body was breaking down. My body was just, it was just like surgery after surgery after surgery. And like, it was just like, you know, I, 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 I was kind of, you know, going up for air. I was trying to like breathe a little yeah. bit, right? From mm-hmm. certain, and it, it's hard to like, and it, it, it messes up, it messes with your head. It messes with, with that, with being, you know, having surgery after surgery. And it's like, well, what's going on? Like, am I, you know, am I the yeah. same? Am I not? And accepting that as a high level athlete is, it's pretty tough. I can imagine. And something like a big surgery, like you said, uh, ACL. Yeah, AC, the shoulder should be sucked too. But the ACL, I don't wish it on anyone. I don't wish it on anyone. When when you have the surgery or, and you're injured, is part of you say, I'm never going to feel good again in the cage. I'm never going to feel the same as I did. You, yeah, those, yep, they crawl in. Yeah, you're like, am I going to be the same? And then, you know, that ego is like, yeah, of course you're going to be the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you you go to training and you don't feel the same. And as a fighter, for me, I never like to complain. Like, I don't like to complain. I hate excuses. I hate to complain. I have to figure it out. Like, I have to take responsibility and and like, and so for me, I, I always say like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Even in training. No, no, no. We're, you know, are you okay? Yeah, I, I'm good. Even though I have a little pain or I'm feeling something, yeah, I still push. So that's like the, you know, that's, that's the, uh, that's the, the, you're fighting with yourself as a fighter for me, I, you know, some will do the right thing and say, Hey, and now at a later time now i realize that hey if my body's feeling a certain kind of way i'm gonna like chill out right yeah. ignore it. i'm gonna chill back not ignore it and i'm gonna do something different to feel better mm-hmm. um so those are kind of the lessons that i've learned throughout the years too Pres- present day how do you feel right now injury right now, I, I, I i feel really strong i feel really good right now i have you know there's aches and pains after 16, seven, almost 17 years, it'll be 17 years in February. Um, yeah, after 17 years, obviously there's going to be pain. Of course. But I feel really strong. I have no injuries. I mean, I would say fresh injuries, right? Last oh, year, what? last year I had a few, but you know, I, I feel really, really good. And I think as also as a fighter, we're never going to be like a hundred percent. We're always going to have little aches and pains, but for the most part, I feel really strong. Good. That's good to hear. 
Thanks. Um, go ahead, Arch. I'm sorry. Good. Well, so, something I just wanted to brush upon outside of the ring. Um, are you still teaching self-defense classes for like daughter and mommy? That those types of classes? Because I, I think love, that's so. I think that's so cool. I love to do that. I love to do those. Uh, I just actually did one in Mexico last week. Um, mm-hmm. For a daughter and uh, like mommy and me, but mm-hmm. uh, it was for women for um, for like a little city in Puebla, um, and the turnout was amazing. But I love doing that because it's like, especially nowadays, right? Yeah, the uh-huh. world is, um, and like the little things that jujitsu and MMA have showed me, it goes, it could could really go a long way for for, for young girls or kids and, and women, um, because the art of jujitsu, it's not about how strong you are. It's yeah. the key, right. So, um, I love to share that. Yeah. I still do those. And Good. I, and I, I love, uh, you know, um, I love volunteer my time for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, re- the reason why I bring this up is I have, uh, I have two beautiful little girls. Oh, I have, yeah. I have, I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. Okay. And I, I, I told my wife, I said a couple of times here and there, like, I think you should take some self-defense classes. And she she doesn't put me off, so to say. Right. <laughs> but she's like, she's like, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you it's having two little kids and work and you know, it's crazy. What would you, what advice would you give me telling my wife to tell to ask her? I think you should take self-defense classes. I think that you should all do it as a family. That would be fun. Like okay. find a jujitsu, find a jujitsu gym. Mm-hmm. And like, I think that she would go less, like it, it would be less intimidating for her. Mm-hmm. For the girls, it would be like, hey, it's a family kind of like activity, right? Yeah. 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 I think that would be really cool. I think that would, you know, just introduce them to that world as a family. Like, is, is, there, is there such an age range? that you could start or there is no. Yeah. Yeah. I think for, for, I mean, I would, when I teach it's from four on up from four on up, you know, the two years old, their attention span is still like a minute. And then, you know, if you, if you like carry a candy or a cookie, you know, but um, so I think four years old, I think that would be a great time, but you could start like, like little exercises, like hip scapes, you know, like the front rolls for the, for the two-year-old, things like that, mm-hmm. that, I mean, because it's, it's kind of instinctual for them, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's like the front rolls and like oh yeah, the <laughs> trips. but yeah, when she is at that age, that would be really cool for you to like take them to a jujitsu leg gym and then have fun with them. And then yeah. that way they feel comfortable. Like daddy's That's really good. Yeah, like daddy's or even your wife, like, all right, we're going as a family. This could be fun, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, look, I, at, I, look at daddy's on the ground. He can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> he just exerted himself for two seconds. <laughs> it's it's true. It's it and what what um it what what's what I'm torn with is just like, you know, like you the stigma of like, oh the man of the house, the father, protect the family, you know. But like I want my I want them to grow up to have some sort of empowered you know, yeah empowered and confidence in you know like i know jujitsu is definitely a, a confidence booster for sure uh, you know even like some little self-defense techniques like learning how to break somebody like the wrist breaks for women you know like because they feel like okay if you ask your wife like how would you if i called you you know with all my strength how would you break my grip if i if i control your wrist she probably, mm-hmm. how is she going to, she's probably going to be like, I can't do that. You're much stronger than me. Yeah. But if you teach them like the techniques behind that, and then she feels her power, like she, you, you know, you hold her tight and then she breaks it. She's going to be like, just by that. It's like, you could see it in their eyes when yeah, I, teach yeah. them something. it's like the littlest things like wrist mm-hmm. break, you know, like teaching them like, okay, you're always going to go towards like the break the break right and they're like oh my gosh i never thought of that i always thought hmm. about pulling or you know different things well that's like something that you're not supposed to do right pull because then you're pulling the attacker towards you right uh, so gotcha. like that they're like what or like 
just by even switching your base, like, Mm -hmm. like lowering your base so that you can be like, you know, your base can be better. They're like, Oh my gosh, I never thought of that. You know, just little things. It it really like helps their confidence. And yeah. So, I mean, where are you guys at? Where, where? New Jersey. New 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 Jersey. Jersey. Okay. That's right. So whenever I'm in that part of town, I'll hit you guys up and we can do something. Yeah, absolutely. I I would would love to do that. Yeah. I'll send you some stuff in New Jersey. uh, And so that, you know, she can like probably go to some, some self-defense classes and very cool. Very appreciative. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So I always, uh, I'm, I'm fascinated about uh, what goes through a fighter's mind on, let's just say uh, on fight day, you did the, you know, you, you waited the day before it's all the stuff you're there from the hotel, you're in, you break, you break a sweat, you're training. What's actually going in your mind, like going on in your mind the hour before the fight? Like, what do you personally like? What's happening in there? Me, I'm like in Disney World. Wow. <laughs> That's like my Disney, like that. I am in like, I didn't have, a, you know, growing up in my childhood, I didn't have, I had to grow up super quick. So I didn't have much of a childhood. So okay. I'm in my childhood right now. I'm making, <laughs> I'm making the best of it. So yeah. Um, fight day is I'm, you know, I've always been like that. It's, it's, the only times that I haven't been calm and, you know, having fun, it's, is when I know that I'm going in, like I've had an injury. And so like, I'm like, ah, I know that I'm not a hundred percent. I know. And I go in with that thought. Um, but I usually, you know, when I'm good and, and for the most part, like close to a hundred percent, I'm the calmest before I go into the cage. I'm just like the calmest, I come out, I do my thing. I don't hear the crowd. Like it's just laser focus. Wow. I'm super, I'm super calm. You know, um, I have like my routine that I do my meditation and I do my breathings and, and I try to just enjoy it. You know, I, I think that those, those years that I was in the UFC and the years that, that I had a lot of surgeries happening, I wasn't having fun. You know, I wasn't enjoying it because I was like, so like in my head and so stressed out. I, at the time, I didn't even know that I was going through that, you know, now seeing, you know, read, talk, like talking about it and, and kind of work, I've already had work that I've done from then, you know, I, I was really stressed out. It was a really, you know, hard time for me that those coming back from surgeries and things like that. But when I'm having fun, I always, when I fight, I always try to have fun. If I'm in the cage, I'm going to fight and fighting for me. It's like, I, I don't know. It's yeah. A lot of people call me crazy, but I love it. It's a passion. It's that, that, that's awesome. Yeah, rock. rock. We, we talk to a lot of fighters and a lot of fighters are like, Oh, I'm, I'm oh, oh, you know, I'm really nervous or, 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 or I'm just, I'm the adrenaline's going through the roof and blah, blah, blah. Your demeanor going into a fight like that is that's, that's, one of a kind almost. Right. And and listen, I, I'm not saying that there aren't nerves, but I'm not mm-hmm. like, oh my gosh, like I can't like they're 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 normal nerves that sure. you feel when you're doing something at that high, you know, at at that level. There's there's these there, it's just a normal nerve that comes, but it's not like I at myself up or like, oh, uh, you know, no, Th- those nerves, I can control them. Like I know, okay, Jess, we're going in, like, this is what you love to do. Like, it's just, and it, I go in the zone that it's, I don't know, it's, I, I remember it, it's kind of like the matrix. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's kind of like, everything is like, it's like, yes. you know, you're having yes. fun and everything is like, you have that, and then if you want to turn it up, it you can turn it up, but it's pretty cool. Awesome. Only only the feeling that you have inside the cage. I can't ex- I just it's I guess it's like an orgasm too. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I think that I, I, mean, I, yeah, I just, you know. Yeah, no, I I, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it, it gets that it's that good, you know. 
That's fantastic. Yeah, I, I think I think the mental part of it is, is uh, obviously it's huge. But we talk to fighters that say, you know, they seen people that they train with in, in the gym that are like studs. And then if you don't conquer the mental part and able, like you said, to calm yourself down when it's fight night, they turn into somebody different. And that, you know. Sure. And it's happened to me, too. You know, like I'm a uh, like there's no turning down. Like I, I won't turn down a fight. And in training, I'll train hard. You know, there's but then, you know, there's been a t- when I've doubted myself due to injuries or whatever's going on with my body, because that's for me, that's my experience. I've had those. And yeah, I, I psych myself out, you know, there's been fights where I lost and I should have won, mm. you know, but so I think that we all go through that. And, and um, it's, it's kind of like acknowledging and kind of learning how to deal with your, with your thoughts and, 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 and also is really having a good team around you. It's so important. It's so important to have like a good, good team that you can trust and that, you know, has your back and, and that knows you in and out. I think that's, that's important too. Well said. Talk about you posted last week, February 17th in CDMX. CDMX. Is that a a fight you're having? Oh, that's a grappling. That's, that's next, that's next month, February 17th. And that's going to be in Budo Sento. That's a, a combat jujitsu match. So oh, wow. my first combat jujitsu match, it's for the championship. Um, it's, you know, like slaps, slaps with jujitsu. So I think the first, well, the first three minutes, it's just grappling. So you start with like a, you know, takedowns and grapple for three minutes. And after they ring, the, after the three minutes, they ring a bell and you just, you can, it's just palms. You can slap. Oh, body on the, ground, <laughs> on the ground and it's combat jujitsu. So, yeah, you got to, you know, we have to as fighters, we have to, if we love the sport and we want to continue doing it, you know, okay. like we have to evolve with the times. And this is what's happening. Like jujitsu okay. has, has also I've seen the evolution of jujitsu and this is the new thing. Right. Um, I'm living in Mexico. So that opportunity came and I, I you know, I, I not. Uh, I don't have a date yet for Ryzen, but it could be April, May. Um, so to stay busy, I was like, yeah, let's do it. So, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a combat jujitsu February 17th, and it's going to be in Mexico City. Okay. Is this possibly stream? Can it be streamed? Yes, I think it's going to be, let me confirm, but I think it's on UFC pa- Fight Pass. Okay. Yeah. One second. I'll confirm. Yeah. Please. Yeah, like, but I think it's on on um on UFC Fight Pass. I'll confirm that. Let me see. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be cool. It's gonna be something. It's something different that I'm doing. Um, oh, yeah. Learning the rules and just kind of, you know, evolving with the times. That's yeah. awesome. Rock. We could we could watch it and be like, oh, I think Jess is having an orgasm right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said the feeling. Oh, the, the feeling. feeling. Oh, yes, yes, the feeling. The feeling. Oh, the feeling. When you're in the cage, it's, it's like no I other. Know, I know. You know, but but yeah, you that's know, how that's how Archie feels when he's eating a cheeseburger. He gets the same when, feeling. Don't worry about it. When you when you when you know when I submit her or like the site the, the yeah. uh, stop the fight, then that's like you know like okay. you know. yep you know there it is. That's when you say yep. I think she is. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so cool. So I want to talk to you about something outside of the cage, uh, like Arch did. Um, and I saw a clip of this. It was pretty cool. Uh, it was you and your girlfriend, Shal- Shalita. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Shalita. Shalita Grant. Um, House of Love. Oh, uh, gosh, yeah. You, That's cool. Yeah. Talk to us about it. I thought that was so cool. Yeah. Well, um, back in 2020, she sold her. She decided to sell her house in California and come to Houston to live with me. And um, I was remodeling my home here. Um, I helped her do some remodeling at her home in California. And uh, so I was remodeling my home, but my home has a special, a special story. So when I was younger, um, I, this family, the special family came into my life. And those were, 
the happiest times that I that that I lived through in my child through my childhood. Um, and they became like grandparents for me. Mm-hmm. And so they passed away uh, last year uh, in tw- actually in 2020 and uh, 2021 and they put the house up for sale. So I, you know, I purchased the home and I called it the house of love because that's where I felt most loved. Mm-hmm. Um, and nice. so that's, how, that's how I, that's how I got, I got the name. And, um, and then I decided to remodel it. We were, it was during the pandemic. She came down to live with me and, and uh, we remodeled it and we like broke records in the, you know, for uh, highest price of square mileage that at that time. And so, yeah, we were like, hey, we like this. Why don't we go just, why don't we just keep doing it? So um, we're currently looking for, for property in Mexico too, to like keep doing the remodeling thing. But yeah, I, I enjoy it. It's like, it's like art, you know, you kind of like uh, pick floors, pick paints, you know, kind of learn a lot of, a lot of different things. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. So that was a hustle. Right project yeah it's that's really so nice. cool yeah. And, and you said you're gonna you you want to continue doing that i think that's uh it is like art it is you know it's it's an outlet like you said you know decorating it yeah and then you're like okay I take it down you break it you know you destroy it and then you rebuild it and it's it's pretty cool to see and and it's you know it's like therapy too so that's something else that i i really enjoy doing that's fantastic well, listen, Jessica, we thank you so much for giving us the time. Um, we uh, obviously big fans. Uh, you're you're very sweet. We thank you. We're going to be rooting for you on the 17th. Um, where can everybody fi- find you on social media? So you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Jag ATT. Um, Facebook, Jessica Jag Aguilar and... I think TikTok, I haven't done much TikToking, but <laughs> I haven't done much, but I think it, it's Jessica or Jag ATT, I think too. Yeah. Awesome. And thanks so much guys for, for the invitation and uh, yeah, stay tuned. February 17th. We I can't, absolutely. I can't wait. February 17th. Yep, we'll see for the best. And I'll keep you posted on, on future fights. Yes, please Thank do. You. We'll check back in with you. Thank you so much. Likewise, and keep me posted on your wife's self defense. I will. And I'll sit over some like uh some some gyms if I find. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course, thank, thank you very much. Thank Have you. Have a good one. The great Jessica Aguilar. Thank you so much. Adios, bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Jessica Aguilar. It doesn't get much better than that, does it, Rock? Don't mess with Jag. Dude, how how sweet. How sweet is she? Yeah, she's awesome. The more and more uh, that you delve into talking, the majority of MMA fighters that are absolute killers (laughs) are the sweetest people outside of the cage. (laughs) It's funny. I read a couple articles about her that... She's a killer in the ring, but outside the ring, she they, people say nothing but nice, wonderful praise about her. Yeah, she's a you, you, you can tell she's a good person. Um, always smiling, uh, positive attitude. Like I said in the interview, you know, you, you it's almost like a double edged sword calling someone a pioneer because she's still doing it, you yeah. know. Um, but the I think she's almost 40, too. Yeah, the, the you, you never ask a woman her age. That's why I waited until she left. <laughs> you may need to sell fucking defense classes, pal. <laughs> um, but no, like you said, uh, she was, you know, fighting for seventeen years. That's a that's a lot. That's a lot on the body. That's that's I couldn't uh, imagine. Couldn't imagine. You know, over thirty fights, over thirty uh, training camps, weight cuts, this that. I mean, it's a uh, it's a lot, but I. Uh, Hopefully, she'll be fighting in Horizon soon. She said in April. But yeah. this, uh, I'm really, I'm really intrigued about this uh, uh, combat jujitsu. I know. Seventeenth, Mexico City. Uh, follow all her socials uh, for updates on that. And um, 
Could you imagine yeah. fighting with the bell, uh, the bell rings and you're going from grappling to pom pom? Yeah. Oh, not for nothing though. I've watched that before. You get knocked out with palm strikes. I mean, it's not oh. like it's it's no joke. Yeah, you know, what they should do is have it on Sunday, and they would be they would call it Palm Sunday. Uh... With that being said, Rocco, what do you have to say to the people? If you just heard us talking to Jessica Aguilar, you're driving your Jaguar, going to the bar to have a couple of whiskey jars, then you just listen to Not These Two Fucking Guys podcast. We out. If you just heard us talking to Jessica Aguilar. Jesus Christ. We're, Come Jesus, on. We're, Jesus. Well, it's almost Valentine's Day. And if you want to be riding high like a Chinese spy balloon over the U.S. but don't want to get shot down, then you and your significant other go to www. Fucking near. <laughs> don't put that in there. Fuck you. Don't do it. No, I won't. I hate you. If you and went. <laughs> well, it's almost Valentine's Day, so oh, if you want to be eat it, just that's eat nowhere it. near the my my mouth isn't near the fucking mic. Jerk off. And when he means Mike, he means Dick. There we go. There he is. Valentine. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Maybe this guy will talk better. <laughs> <laughs>